During his time in the Marines, Josh Rushing was the military's point person for news organizations. That included working with Al Jazeera, the Middle East's only independent news organization, and an organization falsely accused of having ties to terrorist groups. Rushing eventually left the Marines to help start Al Jazeera English, a move that earned him death threats, hate mail, and the insinuation of being a traitor. He told journalism students at the University of Central Oklahoma this week, the move allowed him to bring the world to the U.S. airwaves. So I'm in the Al Jazeera network. I'm spending some time there as a spokesperson. I'm explaining what we're doing. And it seems to me that they're covering the war in a bit of a different way than the American networks. And I'll tell you how. They were asking challenging questions. If you're a government spokesperson, the interviews should be difficult um, for very, very good reason. And they were on Al Jazeera. And it was about this time that uh, Rumsfeld and some of those around him started to say Al Jazeera uh, is the mouthpiece of terrorists, that they uh, show beheadings over and over, that they're Al Qaeda's news channel. And I was there. And I'm looking around, and I'm like, well, okay, in the history of the network, they've never shown a beheading. It's against their code of ethics. They don't show that kind of video. If you read what bin Laden said, and, and, and you can, it's translated, it's at the Center for Counterterrorism uh, through West Point, he calls for attacks against Al Jazeera. If you read what Zabur Hiri said, number two at Al Qaeda, he calls for attacks against Al Jazeera. And you want to know why? He called him pro-Western and Zionist. It wasn't because of a cozy relationship between Al Jazeera and Al Qaeda any more than the New York Times had a cozy relationship with the Unabomber when it ran the Unabomber's manifesto. The mistakes we were making with Al Jazeera were strategic missteps on the, the level on par with the mistakes we made with WMD in Iraq. It was that serious. And there weren't a lot of people uh, that could say what I could say. The Marines teach you early on, do the right thing for the right reason. And it's a great, great kind of simple moral calculus. Do the right thing for the right reason. And I'll tell you, as you get older, you'll realize how much more difficult it is to discern what the right thing is and then to understand that you're doing it for the right reason. But it is pretty simple in the fact that there are no caveats. It doesn't say do the right thing for the right reason unless you're scared or unless you're going to be criticized or unless you're going to be killed or unless someone else will be killed. It's do the right thing for the right reason. At that juncture in my career, the right thing, what I could do better for America, was to get out and speak from this unique perspective. And I, I travel a lot around the world speaking and doing journalism. When I'm in the U.S., I know this is one of the few places where I'm going to go tonight, and I will not have BBC World, CNN International, or Al Jazeera English on my TV. We feel like we live in the media capital of the world, and the truth is, this is a media bubble. We are so isolated from the rest of the world that you have to make an effort to go online and to find other information. If the longer you live here and the more you watch our media, the whole world starts to look like planet America. And we're in the center of it and everyone else is just kind of on the fringe. And so what that allows to happen, that bubble, that means that they're not included in our natural limits of empathy we start to naturally see the world as Americans and everyone else. And as long as they're that exotic other, then we're allowed to treat them in a certain way. And we're all okay with that. And you can look at this, everything from Guantanamo to drones to invading countries to whatever, we're okay with that. To the way our economy affects the people who live in Juarez or Bangladesh, with the fires and the buildings that collapse so that we can have cheaper t-shirts. And we're okay with that. It's impossible to not be a part of that, but without the realization that we fit into this bigger picture and we affect the whole world. When we sneeze, the world catches a cold, but we often don't see it. And so it became kind of a mission for me, at least with Al Jazeera English, that if I can't take America to the world, perhaps I could bring some more of the world to America through at least getting more international news on our airwaves.